Hello, everybody. This is Lee Laney. We're here this afternoon with one of our intrepid librarians from the Neva Lomason Library in Carrollton. And we're going to have a little video and uh, internet workshop on drawing kitty cats and encourage everybody to be creative and get them to understand that anybody can do this. Uh, some of you listening may already know me or be following the things that I do artistically on Facebook and what have you and know me as Uncle Lee Folk Art. Uh, I brought my sketchbook that I'm currently working on that I started right at the beginning of the lockdown period. Uh, and so we're going to thumb through and show you a few of the things that I do. But today what we're going to do is a three-phase sort of thing with cats where I'm going to draw one that's for children or anybody who's strictly beginning to draw to give them encouragement and to demonstrate how anybody can do this. And then we're going to draw one where it's the kind of style of cat drawing that I do. And then we're really going to have some fun and we're going to draw one where I keep my eyes closed. And at the end, we'll look at it and have a couple of giggles and then we'll do some other things to fix the mistakes that I make while my eyes are closed and make it a little bit more stylized. Once that's done, I did bring some watercolors, so we'll finish the drawings off as well. Some of you may have seen things like this before. I hope you think they're funny. My wife doesn't think they're very funny. Usually when I draw something like this, I'll show it to her and go, look like this, and she'll go, I love you, but that's creepy. Take it out to the barn. I don't want to look at it. Uh, I have some other things that I thought we could look at. Uh, here was a an attempt to put book elements in a human face. This is something that I'm working on actually for potential use at the library later on for when they're having a, uh, a show or a display there. Here's, as there so often are, uh, just elements of the human head and what I'm doing and everything's supposed to be fun. This is a little bit more of an example of the things that I've been doing lately where I start out with my eyes closed and make a bunch of mistakes more or less on purpose so I can come back and make a very stylish drawing after. This is much more like what we'll try to end up with on the second phase or the third phase, excuse me, <clears throat> where what we would do is draw cat bodies with her eyes closed, then come back and connect them a little bit to clean up the mistakes that you make while your eyes are closed, and then fill them in with fabric patterns. Um, just a fun thing to do. Another example of a cat with fabric patterns. Something that's a little bit more my speed. And then we get a little bit more adventurous as we go through the book. And we're almost to the end of the book. And that's the last that I have drawn. And here, we're gonna be making something else in just a minute. One of the things that happens when I'm talking with people, especially about art, is they say, well, I can't draw. And I always just try to say, look, you can draw basic uh, geometric figures like a square or a circle or a triangle, a more or less straight line and a curve. And if you can do these things, you can combine those very simple concepts into a complete drawing. What we'll do here is we'll draw us a, it's a kind of a circle. Let's call it an oval. We put a couple of triangles on it for ears. Circle, circle, very small little square, curve, a curve. And you can see how we got a face shaping up pretty quick like and this is the kind of thing children can do and adults just need to be reminded that they can do these things too we were all experts on drawing stuff like this when we were kids and then it got trained out of us as we left school okay that's a curve Now that last little bit is a little bit tricky. What I would say there is, draw the thing, draw it again, draw it a third time, a fourth time, and go all the way up to 10 and see how it improves each time. 
Okay, two more little curves, and that's his back foot. Okay, here's his front paw. Okay, here's his front paw, and the other one is coming back like that. Okay, and then we can color it again with the uh, kind of a triangle sort of thing. Think of it as a tabby cat. And notice I'm working very quickly and not worrying about things where, oh, it doesn't look right. You're having fun. Okay, I've never drawn this design before. Okay, so there's things that I would fix like that. Have him have more of a cheek on the next one. That kind of thing. And there, you got a kitty cat. All right. Uh, previously, I was doing something with a pencil, partially because it makes me uncomfortable, and I was wondering if I would ever have to uh, erase anything to make a point to you guys watching out there in Internet land. Typically, I just work with ink, and a lot of times I end up using the same basic design repetitively and I just change certain details every time. So what we're fixing to do here is in ink I'm going to draw two cats in front of a fence with a moon and they're at an image that appears in the current sketchbook several times. That's a blind contour one so the eyes ended up elsewhere on the face uh, just because I was drawing it with my eyes closed. There's a variation of it. But I'll have my eyes open, so we'll just have like this, the fence, and then the moon, and we'll put patterns on them after. So, here we go. And see, one of the things I do is, instead of getting caught up in drawing the paws and that kind of thing, I just leave them off. So here's this guy's legs, but his paws will be down here off the page. Easy peasy, right? It's not a complicated design. It's something that you can draw over and over and put little variations in it. Is he angry? Is he happy? How do you want to do the eyes? That kind of thing. See, on this guy here, I'll add him a little bit of a chin, which that can, if you mess it up, make him a little bit dog-like, but not necessarily. One of the things that I get in trouble for at home is everything turns out sort of uh, vaguely angry and my wife doesn't want it to be that way. Why aren't the cats happy? And so one of the things she has coached me is don't have the drooping whiskers that do like this. Have them be like this. Because if they're like this, the cats can be happy. She doesn't like angry cats. And a lot of the things that I draw just end up being kind of angry to begin with. Let's see here. Excuse the chair there. It's actually doing just fine. And then here's our circle with the moon. Boom. That's the basic design. Now, one of the things I like doing 
is putting fabric patterns into the cats when I'm finished. And so we're going to, uh, let's see. This is a very quick way to do things. So you see these triangles come up over and over again. Simple lines. A lot of times people like to ask, how long did it take you to do that? Well, most of the time with me, it doesn't take very long to do any of it, but a lot of work gets put into deciding what to leave out. We don't want to clutter everything up. People like easily digested images. And so a lot of the work for the artist is deciding what is it that's easiest for people to look at. Because you don't want them going, hmm, this is overly complicated. Okay, so that's a triangle pattern like that, and I enjoy those. We'll do this like this, and then we'll change how the triangle goes a little bit so we can avoid having certain complications. This ends up being colored much more uh, closely in a later step. Here, we'll just go with polka dots. And there we have the first layer of several, because you saw how they turned out over in the examples that we were going over previously, where what we have is there's the black ink, then there's this will be a color, this will be a color, and then the cats will be, I don't know, blue or something like that. And then I come back after having used the watercolor on them and put ink in to flesh it out a little bit. See, what happens here is I, I don't have any idea where the face was, so I usually end up getting the eyes wrong, okay? I'm using the same design as before, so I'll put the fence in, okay? We'll change it a little bit and put the moon up here. And if it ends up messing up the ears somehow, we'll just work with that. And then the second cat... I ran out of page there. And so that's the basic design. And now I'm going to open it and have a giggle. Crazy looking, right? But what we'll be able to do is come back and put a line in here and put a line in here and maybe we'll end up giving them an arm and put them scratching like. Okay? And so we'll have a color for the fence that goes here. And that color will reoccur here. There will be a color for the sky color for the moon and then we'll put a pattern on the cat after we've connected the places where we missed while our eyes were closed. So I had messed this body up so bad but I can still end up with something at least vaguely cat looking when I come back with the ink. I just put the eyes in which I had forgot to put them in in the initial drawing altogether. but you just come back and add the details that you knew you wanted to use in the first place. Okay, this is a big gap here, but what we'll do is, there's a neck, goes down like this, we'll give him an arm, he's raising that like he's scratching. If 
fill in the eyes. Okay, what kind of pattern might we want to use? So it looks like something that might be on a curtain, you know, something from a long time ago. We'll connect that there. The eyes got left off, but we can put the nose, the chin and all on here. And then give this some kind of a pattern. What kind of pattern should we use? Squares. Squares? All right, squares. And that's what we end up with. And I know? think it's crazy looking, but it's very amusing to me. I don't know if it is to everybody else. And so what we'll do now is we're going to hit the stop on the camera, and we're going to get out the watercolors and put color on this stuff. So this is going to be quick and dirty. I've got one color. It's magenta. We're picking that because I like it so much. No, that's not a cat color, but it is on my planet. And I just put this stuff on here like so and we're not going to use a lot because we're limited i think in our time that we can devote to this for the episode so we're not going to get out of control of course i've been trying to demonstrate that we don't want to uh try and paint the sistine chapel ceiling if that's not what we're doing and we'll actually do the fairly rare thing and try to avoid the eyes so the white of the eye stays white because in my work what happens is I'll color like this and that's the appropriate thing to call it rather than painting and then come back and add color in the uh, little triangles with ink after the watercolor has dried and I'm trying to use as little water and watercolor as possible so that it does dry swiftly and I can keep on going and move to the next thing. And we'll put a little of pink up here in the ears and boom that's how long that took. We're going to switch to the next page. We're going to change colors. Who wants orange cats? Okay we can do orange. We better be careful about how we position this because we don't want to make a mess. See how the color pulls up around where you've drawn the ink lines? That's an interesting effect. Remember with your cell phone, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff to this lighter. Um, my friend Patrick Henriksen in a lecture to the art guild a couple of years ago put us on a free photo app called Snapseed that uh, well given that it's free you can certainly get your money's worth out of it just playing with the filters nothing wrong with that we weren't really timing how long it took to do that cat but it did not take long, I would say, to anybody who's uh, concerned with doing a good job. 
if you slow down and pay attention, you will do a better job. Now those cats have been colored. All right, and I'll just spin this around this way. Who wants red cats? Or should we have blue? I like blue. Okay, blue it is. This is a wonderful blue here. It's one of the most highly recommended blues in the Uncle Lee universe. It's called Prussian blue. Oh, I love Prussian blue. So earlier when he was drawing this, he was completely blindfolded, in case we missed that little detail. See how I overpainted a little bit there? And I'm not moaning about it. I'll just fix it later. Because that's one of the things that happens is you learn how to fix stuff. Because I'll be coming back with a darker color and I can just cover that up. blues we'll give these guys a little bit of a different sky see how that's a different blue so that's <clears throat> let's see what's this one called ultramarine um don't spare the watercolor the more it pools like that the more interesting it's going to be once it dries giving you all these different depths of color to what you're doing. Go over here to the dark. I don't know if that's what I want. Um, let's see here. What all do I have to choose from? Let's switch back to some umber. So this is going to be my fence co color. Notice one of the little things that I'm doing that's a nice stylish move is not painting up too close because it looks interesting to do it that way. And again, one of the things we're trying to do is put the painter back in touch with their child, their inner child themselves, so they're having fun instead of just doing the rat race. One more little bit right here. And now I would stop and let it dry. 